Um, welcome, everybody. Um, I prepared this presentation in English. I'm not sure if that's really necessary, but yeah, okay. So I'll continue in English. Um, welcome again. My name is Eric Sol. I will be uh, presenting you a couple of possibilities to use Drupal, a rather, rather well-known and large-scale, large-employed content management system framework, I'll come to that later, to use it for e-learning purposes. Um, okay. Okay. Um, I'll discuss a bit about myself and about e-learning and Drupal. I will discuss a number of existing contributions for Drupal to use in e-learning. I will try to discuss a couple of projects that we've done recently. Um, and uh, finally, I will set a bit of a roadmap and maybe have some discussion on whether that's a useful approach or not. My name is Eric Sol. Um, I have a wife and two kids, um, been working at a couple of universities and have hobbies in uh, rebuilding houses, uh, biking, well, used to, um, and uh, audio, at least music and the reproduction of music. Um, I won't go into much detail about that. Um, E-learning. We have a whole bunch of opportunities. And um, earlier this, eve this afternoon, I was at the presentation of Xerte, um, which is rather an interesting product as well. Um, but these are the ones that I am at least familiar with products for e-learning that I've been using actively um, in a educational context. And one thing you may notice is that a couple of projects, of a couple of tools are in a sense project management tools um, used in both an e-learning and in a project, traditional project management context. Tools like Project Place or Viadesk um, are products that you uh, encounter in learning environments as well. I don't consider that strange because from my perspective, learning and working are, well, you can say both sides of the same coin and they're not all that different. Um, I may be biased by that, but at least for me, that's true. And for a lot of our customers, that's true as well. Okay, well, is, is anybody familiar with the e-learning jargon, the acronyms, the standardization organizations? Can I, can I see some hands, maybe, or? Okay, well, that's roughly half of the public. So, um, they're not all that important for my presentation, and I'm not certainly not going to rehearse you uh, on, on this, um, but if you... Um, want to study possibilities of at least web-based solutions for e-learning, then you really have to deal with all these acronyms and you have to deal with uh, parties or uh, organizations uh, that use these acronyms to either try to sell you one of these systems. On the upper side of the screen are systems. Um, learn you about standards and there are lots more standards for example the uh, question uh, uh, and test uh, uh, integration standard and so on and so on and much of these standards are provided by mainly those, those two organizations uh, ADL and IMS um, and you you see them frequently okay E-learning, from my perspective, is all about a couple of building blocks. Um, for e-learning, you need to have content. You either create content 
or you import content, or you display content based on another host, like YouTube videos or something else. So one main goal of any e-learning tool will be to create and deliver or import content. One other aspect is content delivery. Um, because you see, in, especially in larger organizations, distribution, the mechanism for content storage, like in learning content management systems, and the delivery of content, like in learning management systems, or ELOs, as we call them most of the times in the Netherlands. E-learning is also about workflow, about, okay, am I capable of going into the next course? Um, uh, have I uh, finished an assessment? Uh, uh, do I, uh, uh, are there any pre-requirements to start with a course? And so on and so on. All of that, I call that workflow. E-learning also is about class management or enrollment or, well, you need some sort of distribution from your students or your learners in classes or groups or whatever. E-learning also is about assessment because if you don't know what you've learned or you don't know anything about your prerequisites, then it's very hard to encounter in e-learning. And most of the e-learning tools have some basic scope of assessment at least. Increasingly important is collaboration. Um, a lot of e-learning tools like the Gemilos, like the Blackboards, like Sakai, like all those tools provide for at least some sort of collaboration. Um, probably from, from all these basic notes, collaboration is the, the most discussed part in e-learning tools because especially young students now have such an overwhelming amount of tools to collaborate and to communicate amongst one another. So collaboration and messaging are both in the same boat, I guess. And probably, well, from my perspective, the last part is statistics. You need to have some sort of overview of what people have done, what they still need to do, how much time they've engaged in courses and so on. This is about e-learning. And this presentation was about Drupal and e-learning. So let me give you a quick heads up on Drupal as well. How many of you are familiar with Drupal in the sense that they've built something in Drupal or at least have installed it? Okay, quite a lot. <coughs> I don't want to go into in-depth discussions on whether Drupal is a good framework or not, or whether Drupal is a good content management system or not. Um, there, there are lots better, well, at least more in-depth frameworks um, for special purposes, like for example, if you want a more blogging-like platform, they're probably better CMSs as well. But Drupal is kind of both. And I think that is very important uh, because that makes Drupal an attractive candidate to use in situations where you don't have a very narrow, limited scope. Like for example, if you want to combine public uh, uh, delivery of content with e-learning. Um, well, I'm not going to throw up all what's, what's there. Um, it's important that Drupal is both and that Drupal can be successfully applied if you have a use case where you want to have web-based content um, even in an e-learning kind of environment. I'll come back to that later. Um, okay. Um, one more question about Drupal. Have you installed Drupal yourself and added contributions, or have you been using Drupal like um, the Drupal that's been provided by, say, Strato or other large scale internet providers? Can anyone comment on that? Strato, okay. Um, I ask that because in if you 
uh, come to familiarize yourself with Drupal provided by uh, such a provider as Trato, um, it's, it's quite hard to see a lot of the benefits of it because Trato well, it delivers you a sort of a plain Drupal instance and you have to do all the work yourself. So I just want to mention that. Okay. Why would you use Drupal in a, for e-learning? Especially since all those other tools are there as well. Um, and there are tools that are very good at um, specialized parts of the e-learning environment as well. Like, for example, tools that create learning content or tools that provide collaboration and so on and so on. Um, and I've added a couple of advantages that, especially if you have a use case where your regular e-learning tool does not fit in very well, and, well, you have to trust me on that, there are a lot of use cases where the regular learning tool don't fit very well. You want to have, for example, uh, different kinds of presentations. Um, I'm not familiar with the most recent versions of Moodle, but up to a few years ago, it was very, very difficult to use Moodle outside of a three-column presentation. And if you want to have very granular permissions, or if you already have, say, a large Drupal website, and you want to add some e-learning content to that, you don't have to use uh, a different or a separate tool. And maybe the last part is important as well. Um, there are a lot of Drupal shops, a lot of Drupal uh, uh, providers that can help you set up a Drupal environment and can help you deal with all of the goodness that Drupal has to offer. Any comments or questions on that already? I mean, I'm open for interaction. I also know that we're heading for the social event, so I understand. Okay. Now, if we look at the different parts of an e-learning environment, then we can, for every part, we can address that with some of the more generic Drupal contributions or even modules from core. Um, so you can do a lot of e-learning in Drupal even without contributions that are specifically geared towards e-learning. And for some reason this is happening more in the United States, as far as I know at least, than in Europe. Because in Europe I don't see many examples of that, but in the United States, especially in universities, there are a lot of professors who run their own Drupal side and use that to deliver content, e-learning content, for their students. It's perfectly possible, and um, it's maybe not all there is to it. Um, that's probably the reason why this book exists. Um, it's a book uh, uh, about Drupal for education and e-learning, um, which sort of has this scope use generic Drupal functionality and contributions to set up Drupal for e-learning. For, for anybody who is a bit more savvy with Drupal, if you are familiar with Drupal, then this book does not present any anything new, probably. Um, because, it's well, I think it's for two-thirds, it's just Drupal. It has nothing specifically to do with e-learning. Um, but it's at least possible, and there are quite a lot of examples, especially in the United States, of people using Drupal this way. And, well, it's all there. I now come to discussing a couple of specialized contributions for Drupal that directly address e-learning. And I think well, that's a well. Yeah, that's a name well chosen. The most uh, interesting module, probably, 
is false. Um, it's maintained by a privately owned firm. Um, it's contributed to the Drupal community. Um, I always address how big a contribution is. And um, you have to know that from my perspective, more lines of code means in general, lower quality. Um, I like modules, I like contributions that are really clean, that stay close to Drupal core. And, and um, if modules tend to have a lot of code for, well, not too big functionalities, then I try to stay away from those. Of course, emphasizes learning paths. In a sense, it's a module where you can build a learning path from existing content in your Drupal site. And, and with existing content, it means that it really hooks in nicely into your existing <coughs> structures. Now that's something I like, because if you have Drupal, you have all this content, you have all these structures, you have all these contributions that can handle those, you have the hooks and the APIs you can use, but you can only use it if your contribution respects that. And if it sort of gets into its own corner and has a lot of code, then it's more difficult to integrate it, for example, with other contributions. And so, well, if you have a content type in Drupal, you can say, okay, well, I want this content type to act either as a course container or as course content. Um, I'll show you a picture later on. It has a, a sort of table drag user interface um, um, and it uses access conditions, so workflow, based on either progress, so I can only start this part if I finished the part before, based on grades, I have to earn at least 70% points to start with something else, or based on calendars, I can only start this next week because it's closed right now. And it integrates with a lot of other modules as well. How does it look like? Okay. Um, that's a bit graduated. I define some content type as being a course outline and other content types as being course content and I can schedule a course by adding content let me enlarge the screen a little bit. Okay. Um, rearranging it. Tying it to notes, existing content, so I can easily add new notes or tie in with other notes. Um, It's rather clean from my point of view. Um, and if I take the course, I should be saving or changing first. I can here select new objects to add to the course. Let's save the outline. Okay. And it keeps a track record of what I've already done and what I still might be able to do or still need to do. It's very simple and, well, from my perspective, very clean functionality. Okay. The second module I'd like to address a little bit is quiz. Quiz, is, is, is anyone using quiz? Or? Okay. Um, it's maintained by an Indian firm. It has quite a few lines of code in what it tries to do. It has all sorts of uh, question types. 
Um, and you can add markup to uh, quizzes as well to provide uh, information in between. And it integrates with a few other modules. Um, okay. This is what quiz looks like. And um, this is the screen of admin content. And the first thing you might notice is that I've already done a few quizzes, but it doesn't show up in my content list because quizzes, at least when I uh, engage in quiz, I don't make new content. It's sort of stored in its own world, a bit outside of the rest of Drupal. Um, it has use integration, okay for that, um, but since it's not nodes, the integration is limited. Um, so quiz is, in fact, the, probably the, I don't know, um, oh, could be, yep. Moet dat onderaan? Ja, oké. Oké. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thanks. Sorry. I wasn't aware of pushing wrong buttons, but okay, I might have. Um, so if I make a quiz, I sort of build my own structure outside from Drupal. Now, luckily enough, other modules integrate with quiz. For example, I can add a quiz to a course if I want to. Um, but from my experience, um, and I try to use quiz for one of the projects I will, uh, I will show you, um, and I couldn't find it very attractive to use because of it being too much outside of the Drupal world, so to speak. Um, if anybody wants to comment on that, you're definitely welcome. Yeah? It's, it's its own code. Even if I want to see the results from a quiz, I have, it's, it's, it uses its own hook menu to display a result. Um, and it's all there in the module code. So it's, it's pretty much away from how Drupal normally handles things. So it makes it hard to integrate with, with other possibilities and other functionalities. Okay. Third, and this is a big one, is Drupal ALMS, the Electronic Learning Management System. Um, it's, it's, it's a huge undertaking, mostly uh, provided by uh, Penn State University in the United States. It focuses very much on content creation and content delivery. Um, and it's based on a number of profiles. I think, does anyone know what a Drupal profile is? Or a Drupal distribution? It's sort of a way of packaging all, uh, uh, an unlimited numbers of modules and features and content and structure into one distribution. So when you install Drupal, you can select that distribution and it sort of automatically arranges all the necessary contributions and structures and so on. So it's sort of an out-of-the-box kind of approach. Um, I tried to count the number of lines of code, but it's really hard because it uses a lot of contributions as well. Um, but it's at least some 40,000 lines of code, which is, well, heads up for the maintainer of that. Um, and it puts much emphasis on content creation and especially content delivery. And it does that in sort of a hub and spoke architecture. And it uses the REST API to accomplish that. Um, so the structure is something like um, you have the sys connector, which is sort of the central structure in the hub and spoke architecture 
and through all kinds of automation you can deliver learning platforms and these these are all different Drupal sites based on what the Sys connector can provide you and these sites can be rather plain Drupal sites with content um, but uh, sites can also be that is another distribution a collaborative learning environment or um, a specialized Drupal site where you can use massively open online communities uh, for courses in, in that and an interesting part of the architecture is there's also a connection between the sys connector module and the LTI tool provider module that's another contribution on Drupal.org and the LTI tool provider can integrate with other e-learning systems like Blackboard or Moodle or whatever so you can in that way you can deliver Drupal content in a well sort of seamless way to external learning management systems like Blackboard and Moodle and my comment on this is that this is all very nice but it's also very complicated it's a huge architecture, you really, you really need to set up a lot of things. You need to be aware of REST API and services and a lot of constraints involved. If you have a use case and if you have a budget which necessarily provides for such an architecture, you should really dig into it. But, well, keep your schedule clean for a couple of weeks uh, because it's, it's very complicated. Um, and the second command is that it mostly focuses on content creation and delivery. Um, even with the MOOC distribution, the collaborative learning environment is more well, about collaboration. That's a different profile, so you have to install that as well. Make sure you synchronize the profiles in the correct way. So it is, I think it's out again. Uh, so Maybe the battery is really worn out, or I'm just having sweaty hands. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll move over a little bit to here. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. If you can find the time, please study it. One of the more generic contributions that is also quite usable in e-learning environments is Open Atrium. Um, are you all familiar with Open Atrium? Um, <coughs> it's based on, on organic groups in a sense um, and it provides for a lot of features um, to have a intranet in a box kind of deployment for Drupal. Um, it's quite generic, so it's often used for quite different use cases far outside from e-learning. Um, it's tied in with Monopoly. Monopoly is sort of a multi-panel manager in Drupal, where everything is a panel and you have a zillion kind of options. Um, so I, I think that with Open Atrium, it's, it's sort of, well, you, you love it or you hate it. There's not much in between. Um, and if you want to fiddle with open atrium, so good luck. Um, because that's, there are so many dependencies that it's really hard to treat it. So if you want to build your own kind of collaboration environment, from my experience, it's easier just to start with organic groups and plug in all the contributions that you really want to use. Others may have different experiences, of course. I can only tell you what's mine. Um, well, looking at the time, I won't go into much detail about what Open Atrium does, unless you definitely want to see that. Um, I'd rather discuss a project uh, that I've done together with Jan earlier this uh, the beginning of this year. Um, it's called Partner in Balance. 
and it is supposed to be an e-learning environment, e-learning for people who have, not the people who have Alzheimer's disease themselves, but their partners. Um, and the, uh, it's, the, the e-learning environment consists of nine modules on different topics, and each module has this structure. There's an introduction, a video, there's an explanation on, okay, what's this all about? You need to fill in an assignment, and you need to fill in a plan. What are you really going to do? What are your actions? Okay, thank you. Um, and when we started this project, the requirement was it should be done in Drupal. Uh, because they already had a visual design for how the learning environment should look like. Um, so that was obligatory. Um, and there was not enough budget anyway to provide for any custom code. So we had to use existing contributions. Okay. This is how it looks like. I'm uh, here, uh, one of the uh, course takers. Um, this is based on an existing commercial Drupal theme, uh, the Paneka theme. Um, this is the top of the list where I see what my modules are. Um, this is, well, based on the, the four parts that each model contains of. I have some feedback on who is my personal coach. Every course taker has a personal coach. And there's also links to, um, that's where you see when you log into the system, private messaging. So you can exchange messages between your, with your coach uh, and a forum to discuss more general topics where anybody can join in. Um, I'm not going to show you any content. The videos are uh, very uh, um, private um, because people tell about their real situations having a partner with Alzheimer's disease. So I'll not go into much of that detail. Um, but what we did is that uh, we built this structure. Let's see if I can somehow. Sorry, need to go back. Um, well, let me try to explain it from here on. Um, the big issue here is that although the structure of the course, I'll, I'll skip that. There's probably an easier way for that, especially if I can't find my Ah, the admin here. Admin doesn't have modules. I'll change my screen to synchronize.
Okay, sorry for the confusion. Um, here I am, deal number two. Um, one of our main goals was to present this overview of modules where uh, course takers, if they still need to do something, simply click on a button and, for example, fill in the plan for this module. And if they've already done something, they can still click on it, but they end up looking to what they've already done. As simple as this may seem, for, for Drupal, this actually was and is quite difficult because this is a note form. Um, you actually want people to fill in data. Um, but, well, apart from the styling, for every module, the labels for the fields and the contextual information differs. Um, so what we needed to do was to think of a way of having opdrachten, which is a content type, which we can use for any number of modules with different questions for every opdracht, with different labels, with different texts for the questions as well. Um, I won't go into too much detail, that was the next slide, on how we accomplished it, but we could do it with all standard contributions, especially with Page Manager and making a few views on labels, which is a different content type, which we collect all together in the Page Manager. So for every module, there still is a node add opdracht, but for every module, a different opdracht could be displayed. I'm not sure if anyone wants to comment on that. Is this a bit clear? Because, well, page manager and views are not your average kind of Drupal starter contributions, probably. But okay. Let me skip that. The next project um, was geared towards assessments. Um, um, it's called Click Up Work, and um, its main purpose is to provide beneficiaries, uh, people with an uitkering in, uh, in, in Dutch, um, with self-assessments and use the results of those self-assessments to help people um, to engage in uh, employment and work. Um, the requirements for this were mostly set by our launching customer, which is the Gemeente Goede Overflakke in, in the south of Holland. Um, and we had to put a lot of emphasis on usability. Um, I've been there and watched people who never ever touched the computer before in their lives, they still exist, um, and use Click Up Work to fill in their online self-assessment. And most of them succeeded. There were a couple of people um, that, well, were so clumsy, uh, they couldn't manage or they couldn't read at all. Um, and since most of the questions are text-based, yeah, well, you have to read. Um, uh, but most of the people succeeded in that. Um, and although the budget was a little bit higher, we still had to make sure that we shouldn't write a lot of custom code. So this, all of this application consists of around 2,000 lines of custom code in one single module. Um, and what it does, well, for, some, for example, is present a case manager employed by the municipality with an overview of data for a candidate, as we call them. And the data addresses the scores that people have on the different assignments, but also a lot of personal data. So, in a sense, Click Up Work is, for at least a website, quite a data-rich, quite a, well, almost transactional application. Okay. 
maybe I should do this locally because the internet is a bit slow. We have, we could say, three kinds of forms in this application. We have more normal Drupal forms, most of them broken up in multi-step forms to make it easier to fill in. Um, like, for example, the forms that present me for my personal data. Um, we use a lot of field collections in this uh, because of the structure. A lot of the data is multi-value, but it's also sort of combo field-like. Um, uh, so you can fill in more details for a lot of situations. For example, um, well, if you now and a lot of form states and things like that. So nice forms. Okay, um, if I'm a member, uh, or, or sorry, a candidate, Should be demo, sorry. I'm also provided with a nice little bar that shows me my progress of the, the number of assessments that I still need to do. Let me enlarge that a little bit as well. So, for example, this assessment is based on 125 questions that are broken up into screens with five questions each uh, and where people can uh, address these questions on a five-point Likert scale. Um, now, in the structure, and that is, for example, that is a big difference with quiz, this is a note form. So when, a pe when someone fills in this form, I have real notes in Drupal, real data that I can use, for example, for the presentation you saw earlier. Um, and I've also addressed the topic of the Likert scale. In quiz, for every question, you have to fill in the scales for each question. Um, well, of course, you can copy and paste that, but it's all redundant data. Um, so this is based on some form alters where I have a single instance of the scale which is repeated for every question. Um, and that makes it a whole lot more uh, performant and a whole lot more efficient from my point of view. Um, and I can use all the results in a manner that fits Drupal. Um, okay. No, given the time, I'm not going to discuss a lot about the data structures that were needed to, to accomplish all of it. If you have questions about it, I'm, I'm happy to show it later on, maybe as part of the social program. Um, for now, I want to well, come to a bit to a conclusion, um, because well, this ClickOpware project is sti well definitely not done. We, st we still uh, want a lot of things uh, to be done, and the one main goal, and that's why I'm talking about e-learning here probably, is that we want to integrate the assessments and the scoring with e-learning. 
So if you, for example, uh, have a low score on, say, the quality uh, uh, presenteren and overtuigen, um, we can address that by providing people with e-learning content. I'm reworking the assessment module. Um, I'm trying to get it launched on Drupal.org by the end of the year um, as an alternative for quiz. I'm not uh, trying to bash on quiz. Um, it, it, it's, it's very useful in the sense that a lot of people are using it. Um, it wasn't so much useful for our uh, use case. Um, and I think that assessment, the module, will be a valid alternative uh, for, for quiz. And uh, I, I hope to deploy it before the end of the year. Uh, the, the main part will be I've joined the uh, Drupal meetup in Arnhem mid-November. Uh, together with Cos, uh, we'll try to, well, at least come that far that we can safely deploy a alpha version of the module on Drupal.org. The roadmap for partner in balance is a bit unsure since it's being un under, there's a pilot running right now, so I cannot comment too much on that. Um, and what we want to do for Click of Work and maybe in other e-learning projects as well, this is sort of our my personal roadmap. I think the course module is a good and clean starting point um, because it integrates so well with existing Drupal structures. We need to integrate our assessment module with course, but that shouldn't be all that difficult. Um, we still need to evaluate a little bit more about data structures in Drupal, mainly because of performance. This is always uh, well, we always need scrutiny. Um, and I'm especially interested, uh, I have in uh, the work of Dave Reed at the moment, trying to build a multi-field module, a combo box module, we could, we could call it. Um, and instead of using Open Atrium, we prefer organic groups and cherry pick from all the goodies that are in Open Atrium, because there are a lot of goodies in there. And I think the same is true for the LMIS structure. Um, it's too complicated for us. Um, I'm focusing mainly on getting all of this in a single database. Um, well, in one of the earlier presentations, we had uh, somebody discussing PostgreSQL databases of 500 gigabytes or more. So, well, there's enough headroom there. Um, so try to get that working for different groups, for different clients. Um, and anyone at least vaguely uh, aware of the state of Drupal right now will probably be asking, how about Drupal 8? And I can only say, okay, well, how about Drupal 8? Um, I think it will take at least two or three years before Drupal 8 and all the necessary contributions will be at the point where the Drupal 7 contributions are right now. So I, for myself, don't care too much about Drupal 8, at least not for these projects. Um, and if you want to stay tuned, then drop me a line and I'll inform you. Questions, or are we just wanting to run for the social program? It's okay with me. Peter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and mostly, the, the the biggest constraint in performance is um, where I because there's also matching feature, and the matching feature is the one that needs the most of the <coughs> so it gets the most out of the database, and there are now some 600. Uh, occupation profiles that are scored, with, are normalized to match the scores of a candidate against. What I did was I used two single fields um, in uh, one field, which is an entity reference to the profile, and the other field, which holds the norm values. 
And these are both multi-value fields, but they're not an entity. They're single fields. And I can combine them by using the deltas of these fields. So I say, okay, the delta of this profile matches the delta of the norms for these profiles. Drupal views, which is used for all these presentation purposes, does not have the option of self-join, which is too bad, but well, it's not there. Um, there's a little gem called views raw SQL, which you can put into views, and where you can sort of type your own SQL. You really have to study the output of views queries a lot, because you have to use the aliases in your SQL that are provided by views, but then you can, for example, do a self-join in views. And, um, well, we've, I've, I've been testing with 500 candidates and the matches, uh, is the views and the, 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 the raw SQL takes about 150 milliseconds, so. Well, if, if you accept that page load or bootstrapping of a Drupal page in average takes about 500 milliseconds, at least for a authorized user, then there's not a real problem. If you cannot live with that, okay. But remember, these are all authenticated users. So this is not a public website where we have a large number of hits every day to handle. So, and well, nobody complained about performance. It's good enough. Any other question? Yeah. Do you use a web form for queries? No, it's nodes. It's not web form. So um, it's it's mostly based on uh, uh, form alters, hook form alter. Um, so there's there's one question. Oh, sorry, there's one field in for example, the content type for the personalities test. And that field is a field collection, which has a reference to the question being asked and the reference to the field where the rubric is stored, the, the, the five-point Likert scale. Um, so it's, it's, it's pure notes. It's, it has nothing to do with web forms. And I decided for that because web form, in some sense, also is a bit outside of Drupal. It has its own way of dealing with fields. It has its own way of dealing with conditionals and so on. Um, and I really wanted to stay as close to Drupal core as possible. So that's why I decided to use nodes and forms. Yep. 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 But there's also edge cases where that does not simply work. So, or at least from my perspective. I must say, I only started programming, I'm, I'm quite familiar with Drupal, but I only started programming in Drupal this year. So, probably from that point of view, there's still a lot I can learn, but well, Cas here is uh, coming to, uh, to, to the rescue, so he's a real programmer. I'm not. Okay. Any other comments? Thank you for your attention.